All right, team. There we go. We're going to see if this actually works. Fingers crossed. Internet has been a little bit sketchy. But we are going to power power through. We're going to power ahead. Kieran and I may speak over each other every single time we want to talk. But <laughs> you just have to listen harder. <laughs> uh, so quick one today. We wanted to, to just chat about what are two to three most underrated or underutilized exercises that we think people can derive a lot of value from, but we just don't see them doing like literally at all. Um, and I can kind of preface where this thought comes from in my mind. So this kind of like tracks back slightly to an Instagram post from a little while back. Kieran, this was a post uh, I got from you cause you sent me kind of a side by side shot. I think it was of keys squatting one of our, one of our clients. And on the one side, he's squatting without a wedge on the one side, he's squatting with a wedge. And you can see like a very immediate and noticeable difference in his ability to control the position of a rib cage and pelvis and have a really strong cylinder and a much better looking squat versus on the other side without the wedge, it's just like a hot mess of extension. Right. And so that, of course, got some, some interesting things going in the comments from folks um, about like, well, you, don't, you shouldn't need a wedge, like just work on your ankle mobility and like all that other crap. And so it really got me thinking on this topic of like underrated, underutilized exercises. Like in this realm in particular, I think the problem with the people in the comments is that they are just totally missing the boat on the fact that yes, you can improve a squat pattern, but that's going to take a lot of time. There is no mobility drill on planet earth that is going to fix and give me whether it's ankle mobility or your ability to open a pelvic outlet that's going to fix that immediately and then also stick around long enough that when you jump under high loads and you actually try to do something for a performance output is still there it's like sure like you can do this ankle mobility thing or this other thing to reclaim hip range of motion the minute i put you under a bar and it's time to go and there's high load and it's high stress, all that stuff that just got put on the table is now gone and is wiped away. So that's what really got me thinking about this is like, okay, people are still missing the boat on the fact that like, if you want to be stronger, if you want to put on muscle, if you care about performance, you have to find exercises that allow you to focus on moving as much load as you can, accumulating as much total training volume as you can, and or moving high loads at the biggest velocities possible if you're chasing more of a power outcome, right? Um, and so that was kind of what got my wheels turning in this realm of like, what are two to three really underutilized exercises, right? And it can be in any realm that we want here, but we'll just categorize it as like, I think this is underutilized for this reason. It helps with this outcome, but I'm not seeing people do it. And so I can start with one and, and I'll, I'll go with that squat example, right? I think that people are still doing a really, really, really terrible job of finding a squat pattern that allows them to actually chase output and just do as much high quality work as possible. It's like, there's a gym in town here I go to. I went there and got a 75 minute workout in and I don't remember what my total training volume was. It was quite high. And the amount of time it took me to do that, there were two dudes there who spent 50 minutes like warming up and mobilizing. I'm like, that's not useful. I'm like, they just started their workout as I was leaving. I'm like, you're going to be there for three hours. Like, what are we accomplishing? And so I think there's this stubbornness of like not being willing to think outside the box and to recategorize your exercises. Some exercises can be given with the intention of trying to improve your movement quality, right? Uh, like on a squat example, maybe I'm going to give you a two kettlebell front squat or a zercher squat. Things that we know are really good kind of squat pattern builders. Those are not great examples of exercises that are going to get you really strong and put on muscle or make you more powerful. So I think in the underutilized exercise realm for squats, people are still like use a safety bar squat with a heel wedge, right? Um, or get on a hack squat or find a pendulum squat. Like, I don't know why we have to be so married to to a squat has to happen with this bar in this very specific way. So that's one example for me. It's like, get out of your own way, quit being stubborn and look at using a safety bar squat or some squat pattern to get your hands in front of your body and just use a wedge or get on a hack squat or get on a pendulum squat. So that's one example for me. I'll, I'll kick it around here. Um, I'll go to you, 
next lands because you're kind of like in my in my circle there sure um well so on the squatting pattern theme uh, the biggest one that I think is underutilized, and people still do these, um, but split squats as a primary lift, like, I think they can be very useful, especially in the populations that I work with. Like if you've been struggling with some sort of pain that won't go away for whatever reason, like it, or even if it's it's the kind of like the whack-a-mole kind of pain where you, you find something to fix one thing and then something else pops up, like if you have that you probably need to rethink periodization your periodization as a whole and selecting a primary lower body lift that is a single leg asymmetrical loaded kind of thing is probably a really good idea and you can the reason i say split squats and not lunges is because you don't have this float period where the other foot is off the ground. So it is, it's a little less of a balance kind of challenge thing. Cause you do still have both feet on the ground. Uh, and <laughs> if you go with, if you perform these with enough intention, <laughs> you can get a pretty solid quad burn. Yeah. I think that's a really good one. I think like the squat realm is where you see people get so stubborn for whatever reason, like, yeah. because they think they should still squat like a baby or, or it's yeah, like depth someone someone has convinced them that like they should be able to squat barefoot with a bar on their back and it should look beautiful like this and i'm like okay like not realistic and probably not feasible for the vast majority of people unless you've been doing it your whole life but if you're 35 and you haven't been super active or you've been at a desk like we're probably not like i don't know i just have different opinion on that than a lot of people yeah. but yeah i think using a heavy single leg variation as a main squat output movement is another place that makes a lot of sense. Like you can move a lot of load. We did a whole podcast on that, right? Like I've had guys that go 405 SSB reverse lunge for like doubles or triples per side. And if you don't want to have that back leg floating, you can just do like an SSB split squat, like in a rack, or you can do like a rear elevated split squat. Like I've seen guys go 300, 400 pounds on like a rear elevated split squat with like a camber bar or a safety bar. Like that's a phenomenal option. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's like, you're, yeah, you're rigging at that point. You're, rigging up your own expensive you know hack squat machine or whatever yeah again i just i don't know i just think people do a really poor job of actually trying to figure out what outcome they're chasing when they choose an exercise like it seems really simple but i think people are awful at it and they keep messing it up it's like are you trying to improve your movement or are you trying to be a strong jacked powerful human it's not that those two things are totally separate but the way you get there is a little bit different right um well there's this perception know. that you know, the squat has to be done this way in order for me to compare it to other people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know, maybe I have like a really fatalistic view of these things, but I'm like, okay, this is beautiful. Like let's play this. Is how I think of it in my mind. I'm like, let's imagine that we're on like a football field and it's like one of those old Oklahoma drill setup things, right? Like we have an imaginary box and let's say it's about 10 yards wide and it's 15 yards long and you're on one end of the box and I'm on the other end of the box. My job is to try to get across your goal line. Your job is to try to get across my goal line. Whoever loses dies. It's like the Netflix show with all the Asians and like someone's up there and poof, you're just gone, right? It's like, okay, in that moment, does all that fucking mobility work you're doing really matter that much? Oh my God, Sam, that is just a, that's a beautiful overhead squat that you have there. Meanwhile, you just got plowed over because you're about as impressive as like a wet paper towel. So this is like, I get passionate about this because it's just like, we need to quit screwing up these two worlds. Like your performance matters, right? Um, anyways, sure. let's circle here. Yeah. We'll go, we'll go to you next, Kieran. Maybe, maybe we'll go to Kieran. <laughs> yep, there he goes. <laughs> we will not go to Kieran. We will circle instead to Mr. Wilson uh, and get his input here. Yeah, I get I get nervous sometimes too. That's the nice thing about the internet is you can you can just log yourself out if you're not ready to speak. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I call my name. Like, don't you wish you had the opportunity to do that in school in when, when everyone was reading around the circle? <laughs> like, did anyone do that in school where you you would you try to predict what section you were going to have to read? And you just you just practice reading that before it gets to you, but then you always fuck it up and you don't actually read that section. 
uh, and, and yeah, so maybe that's yeah, what happened. Yeah, I did that. Right? I haven't thought about that in a legitimate 15 years, but that, Dude, that is a blast for the past. Yeah, I mean, I, the, the worst was in French class. Like, for some reason, and this is completely applicable to the topic, but I took I took <laughs> French uh, all the way through high school. Like, I could have stopped after two years, but I love my French teacher. And the only ones that survived that were, like, the, the people that should be taking French in year, you know, three and, and four as a college course. And somehow I snuck in there. And so everyone that was left were, like, all of the really beautiful, smart girls in our school. And then me. And uh, that was a part of, like, the daily thing is we had to read some passage in French. And it was, like, the most embarrassing, terrible thing. I'm, like, just started sweating right now thinking about it. It has nothing to do with sitting in my car in, in Texas right now in, in July. <laughs> anyway, um, Kieran, do you want to go or do you want – should I Should I uh, keep talking about my <laughs> – embarrassing moments in high school i just joined with the girl in french class so if you want to keep going with that i'll just piggyback <laughs> off of this story this is not as cool as it sounds <laughs> not as cool as it sounds at all um yeah i'll let i'll let you go because i actually i'm having trouble decide i have like three and i don't want to say like you know like maybe all three are mine uh, of, of mine are yours and then you're going to be like what the hell man yeah no so i'll let you go first i feel like there's a bunch we could go with this with this one but i was going to say um any kind of hand supported uh, single leg work, um, primarily probably like a hand supported one leg RDL, because I think those get butchered a little bit more than uh, like a split squat. Um, and I, I, I love that. But um, I mean, I've even seen like some really nice like Hatfield rear foot elevated split squats just to, to help keep guys vertical. But I think that a lot of the true single leg work, um, like a one leg RDL gets butchered pretty easily because of the complexity of it and i found that just a little bit of support whether you're holding like the upright of a rack or just even to a box or something can simplify it and give you that little extra stability where you can get a little more output uh out of the movement and probably have a better sense of control with everything going on um whether that be like a dumbbell um i've even used it with like you know how people do like the landmine single leg RDL, like holding onto the rack with the landmine, you could start ripping some pretty good weight with that. And all of a sudden, to your point, Lance, all your single leg work can all of a sudden get bumped up into a little more primary output based um, while you're moving and, and working around any movement limitations. I really like that one. I wish I had thought of that one. I like to use those too. Yeah. 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 That's, that's smart. I like it. Um, all right, so so I have like two broader categories and then like two specific exercises. So uh, the the specific exercise, the first one uh, that I that I wanted to lead with, is really lame, but I but I I think it's just like a really good exercise, and it, it leads into the broader category as well. And it's a it's a dead bug, um, <laughs> which is funny, um, but I really like this in like the early phases of of teaching someone how to uh, feel where their, their pelvis and rib cage is, to be able to line those things up. And in particular, I don't like the dead bugs where it's just like you're just like flapping your wings around and your, your legs are just kind of, you know, it's like I, want, I, I have a very specific way that I like to teach it where I, I have people reach up towards the ceiling so we're, we're getting that reach, which a lot of people in, have trouble with, with, with uh, not just completely collapsing their sternum and, and rounding out and having their neck go into like hyperextension. So teaching them how to reach properly with the, with the legs up uh, or, or the hips passively in flexion so they're in a, a, like a passive posterior tilt makes it really easy to teach that position. As they're reaching the arms, we're thinking about getting the, the, like the further the elbows go forward, the more the ribs should come back into the floor. I'm going to have them take a breath there in that position. And then as they extend the leg out just a little bit, like you don't have to go far at all, um, but as you extend the leg out, you're going to exhale fully. Um, and then you're going to take a breath in at that extended position and then exhale as you come back in. So there, that leads into the broader category of just using uh, like core exercise, trunk exercise, whatever the hell you want to call it, but using utilizing exhalations with those, with those exercises. Because we're so used to finding um, pressure and, or stability or whatever you want to call it in the midsection by utilizing the Valsalva maneuver, I think for a lot of our bigger lifts, where we're not actually 
we're not really working like those deep abdominal muscles, or at least not like the the side abs, like the the obliques and like the the, the uh, transverses and all of that, uh, unless we're getting a good exhalation. So if we're only if we only know how to create um, tension in that area by using pressure of like pushing our our, our organs out essentially, and uh, if that's the only way that we really know how to do that, I, I think that. Um, that doesn't have a ton of runway. Um, and, and it also has a huge influence on the, the mechanics of the rib cage, which influences the, the scapula and you know, the, the pelvis, everything, of course. Right. So, so I like, that's kind of like the broader category. Um, and so I try to do that with any, any, like if I'm going to do like any type of, uh, direct ab work, which is very, very little. And it's typically only in the beginning with people as I'm, as I'm teaching them these, these concepts, it's going to always be exhalation based. Um, so, so that's, that's kind of the broader category. Another one that I, that I really like is the, um, is like the, the wall supported, uh, like foam roller squat. Um, I think that can be really awesome because it allows for a huge moment arm at the knee which is what we're looking for with a, uh, a squat pattern or, or like a, if we're, like a quad based movement, uh, without having to require a lot of ankle dorsiflexion. Cause essentially what you can do is set it up like a pendulum squat where the load, which is you and the dumbbells, um, can be really far behind your feet. So you can walk your feet really far forward and just lean back into the foam roller so when you do that squat, you're you're already starting with your knees way out in front of the the load. Uh, so you've already created this large moment arm at the knee without actually requiring a whole lot of dorsiflexion, which is where people usually have trouble, and which is why we you know we end up one of the reasons why we end up needing a heel wedge a lot of times. Um, and you can also do that. James and I have done this at um, this super hardcore gym in Austin, Texas, called Gold's Gym. Um, what happened, to you Gold's? You used to be my hero, bro. Um, but then you can do that same thing, and um, you can do the same thing in uh, on a Smith machine. That's brutal. Like, that uh, so, brutal. So that's another one. That's like, <laughs> We're so erect it, after we did that. Insane. So you can get yourself into a really good position where your feet are way far out in front of you. So you're creating that huge moment arm. You're able to just drop straight down with your butt. So you're not going to see a lot of like that butt wink stuff going on. Like you're not going to see a lot of changes in the in the lumbar position. Um, so I, I love those two variations, like, which I think are very underutilized. And I think when people do them, especially like the Smith machine squat, it just ends up being like a low bar Smith machine squat. Like it's like this weird ass hinge kind of thing. Um, where it's like, if you just get your feet out in front of you, um, you're going to be good with the caveat that you remember to re-rack the weight, um, before you step away from the Smith machine and, if he is listening, he will know exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> My boy, um, will your ankles rest in peace? Um, I, I hope that we'll, we'll, we'll recover quickly. I know you will. You're the man. Uh, you know who you are. But um, yeah, that's that's the only thing. So those so those are the the two. That's my long long winded answer. So basically, dead bugs core exercises with uh, with exhalation, and then that foam roller hack squat or, or Smith machine hack squat. Um, I think those are those are pretty money. I love that. Yeah, I will. I'll just chime in again. The the squat where you intentionally walk your feet farther forward, whether it's using a foam roller on a wall and holding dumbbells by your side, or getting on a Smith machine, was bro. My quads have never felt that way and it's like it was like the time because like i'll do a set of squats like my quads will be blown up but like an hour later i'm like okay cool i'm good i'm back to normal i remember we did that i don't remember what we did the rest of that day but it was like seven o'clock at night and i was like yo i like my quads still feel like they're just massive balloons that someone needs to come and pop with a needle i was i ended up doing those way more once i got back to salt lake because the gym in salt lake didn't have like a hack or like really a good option in that realm um and so like i played around with that for like four weeks that was great i used that kind of like as like as a main squat on that smith machine walking my feet forward and it was money so i do think that's a really very underutilized option especially if you if you really want more quad hypertrophy and quad specific strength i was also going to chime in on the dead bugs because i think that is another exercise that is really underutilized mostly because people just don't know how to do it correctly and they just flop around on the ground i think another Another really good tool in dead bug realm to start people with 
is to have them close to a wall and to like actually get like a light hand press into the wall to generate a little tension there and then have them feel that low back Velcro into the, into the ground and to slowly like drive one leg out, kind of like you're trying to push away an imaginary wall from yourself and don't let that low back come off the ground and you shouldn't feel a snap or a poppy sensation in the hip that's moving. Um, I, d I don't know. I feel like a lot of people, when we actually get them in the right position for a dead bug, it's just this aha moment to where they're like, oh, that's what this is supposed to feel like. That's a side ab. Because they're just used to kind of like flopping around and not really taking it super seriously. Another exercise, if you want to think more upper body realm, I think that is just like way underutilized and still one of my absolute favorites is a half kneeling landmine press. Like without question, an, a go-to for me. I think it is just such a powerful money catch-all exercise for people and again, right, like this is not the get super jacked and strong exercise like we talked about with other stuff. But I think if you want like a really nice catch-all exercise, unanimous across the board when I give people this and they do it well, it tends to just clean up a lot of stuff. Um, like we start getting better movement patterns when we go back to a squat or a split squat because they've learned how to oppose a lengthened quad using a side ab because of the half kneeling position. They're a little bit more stable in space with a left leg forward or a right leg forward, again, because of the half kneeling position. Um, and then the landmine press is great because they, they really actually, for the first time, are getting the sensation of what it feels like to have a shoulder blade upwardly rotate and move on a rib cage and to get that reach at the top, right? Like a lot of people will come out of that for the very first time in their life, like ever feeling a serratus actually do something. And so for me, that's still an absolute go-to no brainer. It gets into almost every exercise, sorry, almost every program I write for folks is a half kneeling one arm landmine press. You'll see it at some point in time. I just, I've had too much success with it across the board with so many different types of people, especially if like you need to run a phase of like more like maintenance, just kind of, you know, like doing work on the car, keep it operating at a high level. I will say the half kneeling one arm landmine press is a no brainer. It's something that you need to see at least once a quarter. It's kind of like my basic thought process on it. Lance, any other thoughts in, in upper body realm there? I was, and, and on the serratus standpoint, I, you know, it's, it's easy to think about a bench press. So that one's obviously overused, if anything. Um, but there are ways that you can, you can kind of turn it into, uh, my last one was a split squat. You can kind of turn it into the single arm kind of version um, in, in a like uh, a, a sub step towards single arm pressing. I really think that when people get strong and fit they they kind of foo-foo push-ups but if you load push-ups like that shit's fun <laughs> mm -hmm. and it's a good way to still hit you know you're so since it's a closed chain hands around the ground exercise you're promoting more scapular movement so you can get some of this serratus anterior stability like james is talking about with and you know you follow that up with a half like half kneeling landmine press and you're you're just Gucci. The push-up itself is not underutilized. A well done push-up is incredibly underutilized. Actually doing the push-up correctly, because I can tell you right now, like we went and just randomly grabbed a hundred people. I would be willing to bet ninety-five of you will do a just a poop push-up. Like it's like the most abused exercise. Kieran, what what do you got in this realm, man? we had the um, perform better sandbags come in. And so we had like 150 pounds on my bag, my, on my back. And like, that was like, as a finisher, my abs were cooked. My chest was like popping. It was like those, those done well, or there's something to be said for that. So now that Lance took mine, uh, I'm, I'm for upper body, I'd probably go, I I'd go with um, probably uh, I really like a lateral stance row, whether it's on a cable machine or just a dumbbell and you can get, I just find that the weight in the hand of the side that you're shifting to just really helps myself and a lot of people feel that true weight shift. And like, it's almost like you get so into your hip, you almost feel more hip than lap, but you could still crush some lats and everything on that as well. I think that's a really, uh, really sneaky way to start getting some weight shift side to side and just like layer it as uh, we're just going to get a sick lat pump here. Yeah, I really like that. I think in 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 kind of lat realm, if we think just upper pulling in general, I think that 
one of the most overutilized exercises I think is probably a pull up to be honest. Like I just, a pull up is not really like a great lat builder and it's kind of more like an arm thing. Right. But I think that you see all these people that are talking about like wanting to build bigger, stronger, more muscular backs. And and they're just doing a a ton of like body weight pull-ups. That's not to say like a a pull-up isn't useful and doesn't have some type of utility there. Like you're, you're getting something right. But I think that when we're talking about the lats in particular um, and doing more vertical pulling variations, I think unilateral just makes substantially more sense, right? So I'll go back to another exercise I think is underutilized. It's the, the mirror of my half kneeling one arm landmine press would be a half kneeling one arm lat pull down. Again, I think a very underutilized exercise that when done correctly will get you tons of like really good side abs and it'll get you a lot, like an unbelievable, like you'll get way, 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 way more lat on that than you will on like any type of pull up variation that you're probably going to go do. Um, and again, I, I think maybe a theme here, some stuff to pick out, just like unilateral exercises in general, vastly, vastly underutilized, especially upper body, right? Like our, our upper body and thorax is, is meant to be more alternating reciprocal. Like just think about gait, like one arm's supposed to be moving forward. The other arm's supposed to be kind of coming back. So we're really built well to have, you know, one arm working at a time and the other arm kind of mirroring it in the opposite direction. And so I think upper body unilateral work way, way, way underutilized. The two that I really love half kneeling one arm landmine press and get people up more into that kind of incline vertical plane, half kneeling one arm lat pull downs, just like the mirror of that exercise with an upper pull. I love both of those a lot. The, the unilateralness of your lateral stance is really good for teaching that dissociation. So let's move one arm at a time, but let's keep the hips still. Yep. Yep. I think Sorry, if, you're, if, you're, yeah. if you're going to now, oh, is Ryan uh, if you're going to do, God oh yeah, dang it, he's doing it to me again. I just have like up? a blank, uh, no. I have a blank square. Welcome right to my here. world, Ryan. <laughs> With three purple dots. Uh, I was about to say, I was about to say, it's really unfortunate that the most jacked individual here isn't around to comment on his favorite upper body exercises. So here's what we're going to do. We'll let Ryan talk because you guys can clearly hear him and hopefully it's getting recorded. And so Lance, whenever Ryan's done talking, just give me a thumbs up so that I know that we can proceed. I'll uh, I'll chime in because uh, I got one more. Okay, that people. I get well, to on the Ryan, realm. who I can no longer see and or hear on my side, please enlighten us Gosh. with your wisdom and knowledge. Man, this is just like my childhood. You know, I was <laughs> I was the fourth child. Like I just didn't get paid attention to at all. Oh no, I know, I know what it feels. Fourth like. of four. Yeah. No, fourth of five. So my little brother. But oh man, that's my little brother. Worse. Well, but yeah, exactly. Even worse because I mean, he came around. He was like this new cool thing. I was like, I used to be the cool anyway. Um, so um, yeah, I, I just want to say with the lat stuff, like with the pull ups. So like, what's what's your goal? Like, is your pull is your is your goal to do pull ups? Like, that's great. You know, do do your do your pull ups. If you're trying to do pull ups for lat growth, yeah. To James point, I don't think that it's a great option because I think. Uh, the further you go up in deflection, the more your lats are going to lose leverage at some point to be the, the prime mover there. Um, so if you are going to do them, um, don't go all the way up into full flexion. Like your body should still be behind your arm at the top. Even then, you're probably still losing a little bit of leverage with the lat, but at least you, you give them a fighting chance uh, and they'll, that they'll, they'll keep tension. And uh, you know, just make sure that your body stays behind the bar basically the entire time. Um, and when you do that, you'll feel a lot more abs, you'll feel a lot more lats, um, and you, you, you definitely don't need to go all the way down to that dead hang at the bottom. Uh, but it, but, just, but I, go ahead. Just to clarify, you had said, I, I, it sounded like you were talking about not going all the way up chest to bar at the top, but both. Then also yeah. all the way down. Okay. Yeah, really both. Yep, yep. Because in, in both of those scenarios, like you're, you're, if you're going after lats, which I think a lot of people are when they do pull downs and pull ups. Um, it's okay to not use a quote unquote full range of motion. Um, yeah. So uh, you said that. Yeah. Then th- that's like, I mean, like watch most bodybuilders dude. like, I, I mean, like a lot of them are, are like just kind of intuitively know that, um, I, you know, a lot of them can't put their arms over their head. Uh, a lot of them can't put their <laughs> arms close enough to wipe their own asses uh, behind their bodies either. But you know, so we don't want to necessarily use that as the standard. Um, but you know, it, yeah. there is, there is something to the way that the, those guys move, I believe. Um, okay. So in, in terms of just like upper body exercises, underutilized things, I, I think, uh, just, just broadly again, uh, the, the cables, 
Like, I, I think you have, especially if you have, like, a functional trainer that has the ability to move on multiple axes, that is so clutch uh, for getting into different positions that, like, talk about a, um, you know, landmine press or where you're allowing, or, or that pull down where you're allowing that scapular movement to take place. You can do a very similar thing with your hor more, like, straight-up horizontal pressing when you get into uh, some of these, like, press-around variations um, shout out if, if anyone is interested in like the physics of, uh, hypertrophy training or like just, just physics of lifting in general, I would highly, highly recommend, uh, checking out Ben Yanis and, uh, his, his unlimited platform. Uh, the dude is a beast, like for 15 bucks a month. Like I cannot uh, recommend that enough. I've been working through his material. Um, fantastic. Um, and, and he talks a lot about, about a lot about this stuff. So I have to credit him. Um, but yeah, cables just in general just open up the door for so many things because um, the, the limitation with free weights a lot of times is we're just dealing with this uh, gravitational pull that's only going in, in one direction, uh, whereas if we have cables, we have that, that cam that's essentially uh, changing the direction of, of the resistance throughout the entire range of motion to a degree at least, or at least keeping it somewhat consistent. You know, Then we have to deal with like our internal moment arms and how those are always changing and um, all, all the, the, the strength profile of the, the, uh, the muscle itself, but, but at least it's like, it's not just this incredible drop off that you'll see with a lot of these barbell or dumbbell lifts. Um, and you get the ability to do some things where like you can take your arm into adduction as you press, which will allow you to get that, that scapular movement that you don't really get when you do like traditional horizontal pressing. So I think from a shoulder health perspective, it's fantastic. You're also probably getting some benefits in terms of being able to uh, sh like fully shorten a muscle, uh, which which may be helpful for for hypertrophy. Um, so uh, yeah, that that as a broad category, like those uh, the, the just cables for upper body. You're totally right. The uh, the like barbell work has always been good for loading stuff, but it's we're in a new millennia, you know. Um, and now we have more options. You can, yep. you can use cables and you can load them pretty heavy and you can get a lot done. Yep. James has to be I'm, so I'm bored, done, but he's frozen on my screen. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna just go right into mine, uh, yeah, which yeah. was a, just a weird version of a pull up. Um, when I, I feel like people try to keep these bilateral movements too symmetrical, uh, but they don't understand that they are asymmetrical inside. So when you try to do a symmetrical movement, you're actually like twisting your body. Uh, so one that I like, I like to like steer into the asymmetry because then it makes the, the asymmetry more normal at least. Um, and that the way that I've been doing that with pull-ups is to, I call it a side to side pull up. So you're going to pull up to one side, like with my hand right next to my shoulder. And then I'm going to slide over to the other side, let myself lower down nice and slow. And you get a little extra load on that one lat that you're kind of like sitting on. Um, but you also get this, this contortion of your rib cage and you get to promote some extra mobility. I don't know, Kieran, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I saw, I saw everybody drop it off like flies. I was wondering if I should log out real quick. <laughs> um, yeah, that, I feel like that's just like, you're ready to go to the park and be one of like, what is it? The bar stars or whatever, all the guys I could do like the wild. Uh, but I, I've, uh, I really like some of the, the different, uh, like I've seen, People call it like a left stance pull up where you're just orienting to your point like one way or the other. And like those those are actually like all, all the variations that you're talking about with like the asymmetrical pull up chin up are super challenging. Yeah, I think. And when you start to do symmetrically loaded exercises like bilateral exercises and you're like, OK, well, I got to try to stay in the middle. It's really easy to, you know, to Ryan's point earlier to just Valsalva your way into that or through that however you can, because that's the only thing you know. But if, you know, if last program you were doing some dead bugs and you understand, hey, sometimes if I exhale while I extend my hip, yeah. I might actually extend my hip instead of arching my back. Then you can you can start to learn like, hey, the, the, the torso needs to take these weird conformations so that I can get that full range of motion, like Ryan was saying. Yeah, absolutely. Full squeeze. Um, I guess to just throw one more in the mix while hopefully we give James time to, uh, to get his internet figured out. Um, I really like, uh, 
like a cable pull in variation for like hip flexor ab kind of integration, whether you're doing one leg or, or two, but um, almost like a loaded reverse crunch where it's nice because you're just getting some global flexion uh, for somebody like me who you're talking about, like is always super extended, getting getting the backside to just relax a little bit, um, get some rib cage retraction, like pelvis moving on stable ribs, things like that. That's actually one of my favorite. If I am going to squat, like that's one of my favorite squat warm ups. Just because everything, everything that should feel a little looser relaxes and everything that should I need to like actually function to pull me into the hole feels a little more locked in. Um, so and if you don't have like, you know, access to a cable, go to a better gym. But uh, even like even like a reverse crunch or any of those variations, I think, for like some direct ab work. But again, just getting the pelvis and everything kind of resituated is a nice, nice little one that people might like. That, that's a good way to force an exhalation um, to just kind of like bring everything together. Like if you're pr doing some prep work and you need to move a little bit better, uh, that, that's definitely a, a nice loaded way to do it and actually feel it. As long as you do it, so the way that I teach it, and I don't know how you teach it, but um, is to curl up yeah, one yeah. vertebra at a time while you're doing it just so that you go really gradual because it's real easy to just hinge at your mid back and only use your rectus abdominis yeah feel yeah much worse definitely <laughs> am i am i like James, i have no welcome idea back. what's been going on over here welcome to my podcast this is episode number <laughs> something i have not heard a word that was spoken between you and ryan the cure for like the last <laughs> 12 minutes it's probably it's probably good it was nothing nothing nice was said about you so We'll see. We'll see. I have no idea at what has been recorded and what has not been recorded from this episode. Uh, I'm sure that the conversation was incredibly enlightening and that more underutilized exercises were brought to the light for the peoples of the world. Um, any final closing thoughts from folks before we wrap this and go see if we just uh, wasted 45 minutes of our life? on um a recording that may not have actually happened <laughs> um i i think uh just a quick summary it's like uh get full range of motion when it's appropriate but make sure you're feeling whatever you're supposed to be feeling so if uh ryan was saying during the pull-ups he was suggesting don't go all the way down and don't go all the way up if you're trying to get your lat and i think it, it people are often just they're ignoring like hey if i'm if i'm trying to get my lat do i feel my lat so just feel your lat feel what you're trying to feel uh if it's an exhale and an ab thing try to feel the right abs try to feel the outside abs it's a good summary i like that i like that yeah unilateral stuff super useful and then i would say also just be better with your decision making framework with regards to like what you want out of an exercise like like if, if yeah if you need to get into the gym and we want a training effect like pick something that you can't mess up that is going to allow you to focus on load and then we can work on the movement stuff other places with you right but like don't spend 45 minutes of your 60 minutes in the gym doing a lot of just like low load mobilization stuff because like you're not going to be like you're not going to get training effect like we're not burning fat we're not building muscle we're not improving work capacity you're not getting stronger like you're not becoming more powerful so like and you're also not getting yes that's an incredibly important point here also you're also not getting more mobile um yeah yeah, maybe we should took a whole podcast on like the misnomers of like mobility. We don't need to go into that here because that would, yeah, we just don't have time for that can of worms. Um, maybe it will. Maybe we'll just do like a three day workshop. All the like where you're wrong about mobility. Uh, awesome, guys. Well, thanks for jumping on and doing this. People that listened, um, if you do get a chance to listen, thanks for tuning in. I hope that this cams out okay. Uh, have a great week, everybody.